Hi everyone, Neuralnar here, and today I'm going to be talking about my upgraded 1000 amp hour battery bank, which is now somewhere around 1400 amp hours according to standard battery specifications. In my previous video, there seemed to be a lot of interest about this battery bank, so I thought I'd make another video here uh, to talk about what this is really capable of. In some of my previous videos, people have commented saying that uh, I should show how long the batteries last and what it can power. Now, I'm not going to show how long it lasts because watching something run for 10 hours is even more boring than watching grass grow, so I'm not going to do that, but I thought today I would show you what this setup is capable of. Now, I have powered my entire house, minus the heating and air conditioning system off of this, and it requires very few sacrifices. Basically, as long as I don't power any electric heaters from this, it works great. It does everything I want with no sacrifices. However, today I'm not going to actually use this to power my house. I'm just going to show you some things that it can and maybe cannot power. Now, to be honest, I've never actually loaded this inverter and battery configuration to its limit. This is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter from Samlex. I really like this one. I've mentioned that many times in my videos. But I've never actually, to be honest, overloaded this inverter. I never have. And... I never tried to, but I've also never done it accidentally, so maybe today we'll purposely overload it and see what happens. Also, people may be wondering what I use to maintain this battery bank. I do have that 45 amp battery charger from IOTA, and that works very well to maintain it. However, I have another device that I actually use to maintain this. This little thing. This was not actually made for this type of application. Uh, I'll unwrap the cable here. This is a HPX10 sealed lead-ass battery charger by Xenotronics. And this really is made for batteries that are sub-10 amp hours. Uh, very light use in that case. If you look at the label, I'm not sure if you can read it on camera, but it says output 12 volts at 800 milliamps. So this really is just a maintainer. However, the way it's designed, it's intended to be used to charge and maintain a battery. So I just added these alligator clips that I bought at a local hardware store, and I can clip these up to this battery bank and maintain it without any issue. However, I did have to open it up. There's some security screws on here. I did have to open it up and adjust the output voltage because this has a absorption voltage of uh, about 14.8 volts, I think it was and then a float voltage that's lower. So I just adjusted it and labeled it on here for my own purposes. 13.8 volts at fast charge and 13 float. Now in reality it doesn't enter float charge mode until it's down to a couple hundred milliamps which never happens in a battery bank this size. So it just stays at 13.8 volts indefinitely. Which is just fine for a battery bank of this size. So I use this to maintain my battery bank when it's not in use. And it works pretty well. If you've seen the previous video, one thing you might note is that this is all fully assembled now. I was not able to put this side on until I switched my inverter to the other side of the uh, rolling cabinet here, just because of the way it's made. And that means that I had to switch my inverter to be connected to the middle of the battery bank instead of one end. And that has pluses and negatives. Uh, there's some comments left on that which... Uh, some are true, some are not, but uh, in any case, this is the way it's hooked up. It's good enough for my purposes. And another question that I got is, how easy is this to roll around? I mean, yeah, it's got 12 72-pound batteries in it, plus all of the other crap on here, cabling and everything else. This thing weighs about 1,000 pounds. Now, the wheels that I chose to put on here are 4.5-inch wheels. They're not perfectly adequate for 1,000 pounds. I never intended to make it that heavy, but... That's how heavy it is, so instead of just describing to you how easy or difficult it is to move around, I'm going to roll this into a larger room in my basement to continue this video. And I'll let you determine how easy or difficult it is for me to move, just by uh, how much effort it looks like I'm putting into it.
And there it is, in a different room in my basement. Yeah, it's pretty difficult to move around, but it's a lot easier to roll around than a car of a similar weight, so it works pretty well. Alright, let's see what this thing can do. So you see here that it's hooked up to my battery bank, and that the battery bank is fully charged. 13.07 volts. I haven't actually used this or charged it for a couple of weeks now, so these batteries really do float at more than 13 volts, which is a really good sign. It means that they're in great shape. But let's go over here and turn the inverter on. And the inverter's on. This inverter happens to take about 2 amps and uh, under no load. And you can see that the voltage is slowly falling. In the inverter here, I have a power strip connected up. It's just plugged in. Uh, and once I turn it on, the insuper meter will boot up. And uh, this happened to be how long the power was out. It took 7.4 kilowatt hours. Uh, in any case, uh, let's uh, select, oh, zero watts, perfect. I'm just gonna leave that on watts. Now, it's kind of dark in my basement. If you look around, there's not a whole lot of lights. My basement's unfinished, I'll have to work on that someday. But, uh, in any case, I want to turn on some lights. So over here I have a 500 watt halogen work lamp. Two 250 watt halogen bulbs are installed in there. So I'm going to take this and plug it into my inverter. That will be my first load. That will also make it nice and bright for filming. And you can hear that the fans in this thing turned on. And the voltage has dropped a little bit because it's now under 500 watts of load. Now this battery bank is never going to be fully drained in the time it takes to film this video because there is a lot of capacity in there. But I'm going to leave these lights running because it makes it nice and bright for filming and I'm just going to leave it like that. So that's 500 watts. And now we're going to start trying some various appliances and see if they run on this setup. Appliance number one is my 500 watt halogen work light. The next thing I'm going to try to power is this old electric heater. In the past I've used uh, just standard forced air heaters. This time I'm going to use a radiant heater because you can actually see on camera when it's running. So I'm going to use that one. And you can see here I have it wired up extremely safely with a wire nut and an 18 gauge extension cord which is not adequate for a 1300 watt heater. But in any case, I'm going to plug it in here and see if I can power my work light and this heater at the same time. So you can see that it's on. It's drawing 1,100, 1,200 watts, somewhere in there. And it seems to be operating it just fine. 500 watt light, 1,200 watt heater. No issues. The battery voltage has drooped a little bit, but not a big deal. So let's try adding one more appliance to it. On the floor here I have a circular saw. This is a 13 amp circular saw. Now I'm not actually going to cut something because it'll make sawdust and I don't feel like cleaning that up at the moment so I'm just going to see if it runs my circular saw. And one benefit of having this work light on is that you can see if the work light dims when I turn the saw on. Now, most inverters would have a very hard time powering something like this. I mean, 13 amps here, 10 amps there, 5 amps there. That just is going to overload just about anything. Let's see how this particular inverter handles it. Plug this thing in here. All right. And my saw has a light on it. That is on. Has a laser on it. That is on. And let's see if it powers up. No issue at all. You did see that the light dimmed just slightly, but that's to be expected. I'm drawing a lot more than 3,000 watts out of it when I power that saw on, so that's not really an issue. But, you know, this is just intermittent load. It's only on for 10 seconds at a time while you're cutting something, then you shut it off. How about a continuous load? I have here a vacuum cleaner. This is a 12 amp vacuum. Again, about as much as the saw. And let's see what happens when I try to power all of this stuff at the same time. I've turned my heater up. It is not cold enough in here, apparently. 
There we go, that thing's glowing red again. And uh, let's see if it can run all of this stuff all at once. I expect that it won't. This inverter is only a 3000 watt inverter. But let's see what happens. The vacuum is plugged in and I will turn it on. Let's see what happens. I don't use this vacuum anymore because I hate it, but uh, in any case, you can see that it didn't really draw 13 amps like it's advertised to. It only drew uh, about 2200 watts total between the vacuum and the heater, and an additional 500 that I'm not measuring with this meter on my lights. And the inverter powered all three things just fine. So let's move on to something a little bit more demanding than this vacuum. How about this? This is an air compressor. Now, air compressors are notoriously hard to start with both generators and inverters. In fact, very, very few 3000 watt inverters can power this all by itself. I have one, it's a Xantrex X Power Pro uh, 3000 that can power this, but only because I made an internal modification to it. Um, but uh, in any case, this inverter here, I expect, will probably be able to power it because it is a very good one and it supports a high surge. So I have my heater running, my light running, and I'm going to try this cast iron reciprocating style air compressor that takes 13 amps and see if it can start it up. We'll see if the light dims here too while it starts up. Once again, no trouble whatsoever. So this setup can run that. Again, I'm not going to show you how long it runs this stuff because, I mean, how boring can you get, right? But I have a lot of other things over here to try yet, so let's give those a try. The goal here is to try to figure out where the limits of this setup are, so again, I have my halogen light, which is 500 watts, powered from this inverter setup, and over here I have two very, very difficult loads to start. Lots of inverters have trouble powering these, even 3000 watt inverters. But over here I have my dehumidifier, which I've used in previous videos. It has a 3500 watt startup surge, approximately. And over here I have my reciprocating cast iron air compressor. Yeah, it looks small, but it's very difficult to power. If you try to power this off of a 50 foot uh, 16 gauge extension cord, for example, off of wall power, it refuses to start. It really requires very good power to start. Now. I really don't know if this is going to be able to start both of these at the same time. Because I have my dehumidifier and my air compressor both connected up to this one power strip. And as soon as I turn this power strip on, they're going to try to start up. And I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do it or not. So let's see if this can do it. I'll be extremely impressed if it can. I don't expect that it will, but I've never tried this, so let's find out. Wow! That is thoroughly impressive. I did not expect that. Both the dehumidifier and the air compressor started right up without any issue at all. The light didn't dim a whole lot, and uh, I'm just astonished. That is amazing. This air compressor, like I mentioned, doesn't work on a 3000 watt inverter normally. It requires a very good one. This usually requires a very good uh, 2 or 3000 watt inverter to start. Yet this powered both of them at the same time with 500 watts of load in addition. Absolutely amazing. So, I didn't find the limits yet of this setup. Let's try one more thing. Alright, another attempt to break it. Halogen light. Inverter battery setup, dehumidifier, air compressor, vacuum cleaner. These are all rated for more than 10 amps, so that's... <laughs> plus the startup surge is absolutely enormous. You plug these all into one circuit in your house and you're going to pop the breaker, so... 
Um, anyway, let's just give it a try. We're trying to find the limit of this setup. So I'm going to turn my power strip on. Hopefully the breaker and the power strip doesn't trip this time. And let's see if it can power all three of these at once. The switches are on in all of them. And let's see what happens. Finally! We finally found a failure point. Now, you'll notice how long it took this inverter to trip. The dehumidifier didn't start, the air compressor didn't start, but it continued trying to start them. It just had too high of a voltage sag to start all of them. The vacuum ran just fine. So if I power them up one at a time, I am almost completely sure that they will work properly. So uh, let's try that, because that's really a more practical use circumstance, right? You're not going to start all three of these up at once, you're going to start them up one at a time and want them to run. So let's give that a try. Alright, so I have my setup here, my inverter battery bank with my 500 watt halogen light running over there. That's always going to be running in the background here. And I have all of these things plugged in but not turned on this time. So let's see what happens when we turn them on one at a time and see if they work. If they all work one at a time, I'm then going to take my 13 amp circular saw, which again, a lot of inverters can't power. It takes usually takes a 2000 watt inverter to power this all by itself. So I'm going to see if this will run in the setup with everything else running. And we'll see how that works out. So, I already have the 500 watt light running. Next, we're going to turn on my dehumidifier. No issues there, it starts right up, just like expected. And let's try the uh, air compressor next. See if this will start up while the dehumidifier is running. No issue once again. So let's now try the uh, vacuum cleaner. This is a three horsepower vacuum cleaner. No issue again. With all of those running, I'll uh, try my circular saw. It seems that is too much for it. It did uh, take all of these appliances together to uh, overload this inverter. Uh, it shut off and protected itself, so I can't really fault it for it, but that's really the limit here. I mean, we have a dehumidifier over here that takes a 3500 watt startup surge, an air compressor that takes a little over 3000 watts to start up, a vacuum cleaner which takes around 1000 watts just to run, and a 13 amp circular saw and a 500 watt halogen work lamp. And it couldn't power all of them at once. Well, big surprise, right? So this I thought would be a good demonstration to see what the real capabilities of this battery bank setup are. And again, I'm not going to run this for hours on end until the batteries are dead. For one, it's bad for the batteries. Two, I don't have that kind of patience. And three, neither do you, because that would be boring. So. Uh, I just wanted to show you what this thing was capable of, and I think you can see how it would be pretty good at powering a house. It'll power lights just fine, your microwave just fine, and almost everything else that you have, even very heavy duty stuff like this. And I thought maybe some people would be interested in this. So, this is Neuromar, and thanks for watching.